Without any further ado, uh, we'd like to introduce Sheikh Ismail Kamda, who's, who's spoken to us before about being a productive Muslim and being a productive individual, being uh, uh, in charge of our own destiny, so to speak, and as far as Allah allows us to, in terms of the choice we've been given by Allah to choose uh, how we spend our time. And so since Ramadan is coming to an end, we thought let's speak to uh, Sheikh Ismail Kamda about a post-Ramadan plan around how to implement the good things we've learned during the month uh, in our life and especially for the month of Shawwal. So these things don't just disappear uh, with the advent of Eid and the month of Shawwal. So assalamu alaikum to uh, Sheikh Ismail Kamda this afternoon uh, on what could be the last of Ramadan. Uh, we welcome you to Salam Media this afternoon once again and uh, looking forward to learning about how to post Ramadan uh, with you, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for having me and uh, a belated Ramadan Mubarak and early Eid Mubarak to all the listeners. Yes, uh, I think that is uh, quite, quite true. We are literally in limbo right now, um, not knowing uh, how much how much time we've got left uh, for this afternoon, for this Ramadan. Um, but I think perfect time to make near for what we're going to be doing next. And somebody did say, you know, during these odd days and uh, auspicious days, don't uh, fail to make intentions for what could be in the future because, of course, what we intend now, with a clear mind that we have now, could very well manifest, inshallah, it was Allah's will. So we're asking uh, you, inshallah, for some advice. Um, we're both students. Uh, one of us uh, is at home learning, uh, you know, online. Uh, Akil is a practical uh, learner at the moment with uh, the University of Pitts in the medical uh, faculty. And, uh, well, I'm sure listeners out there, whether they are students or people working uh, from home or essentially uh, could use some wisdom as, as to how to draw from the lessons learned in Ramadan, the implementation that we had, the Samena wa Ta'ala that we were doing uh, during the month of Ramadan, uh, and how that can now impact on our lives afterwards. Uh, so, on to you, Sheikh Ismail Kanda. Khair. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. So, I begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us with a truly beautiful Ramadan. You know, at the beginning of the month, we all were panicking and worrying. Ramadan in lockdown, Ramadan in our homes, Ramadan without Tarawi. But for me personally, this was the most spiritual and beneficial Ramadan I ever had. You know, it's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us metaphorically into individual itikaf. And each and every one of us experience our own month-long itikaf. And alhamdulillah, it has been really productive. Uh, the thing is, how do we keep that momentum going after Ramadan is over? I think that's the, uh, you know, that's the challenge for many people. And I want us to approach this very realistically. Uh, and by realistically, I mean, I don't think any of us can truly be outside of Ramadan on the same level that we are in Ramadan, right? Let's be realistic about that. Ramadan is a special time. The devils are locked up. Uh, there's this sp spirituality in the air. There's angels all over the place. We, we fired up to be the best versions of ourselves. And what happens is some of us, we get this unrealistic expectation that we're going to stay at that same level for the rest of our lives. And then Eid Day comes, the day after Eid, we plummet right down and we lose all hope and we lose all momentum and we like just want to give up. So I really want to begin by advising everyone, let's have realistic goals for outside of Ramadan. Let's not uh, you know, fool ourselves into thinking that we can be on the same level outside of Ramadan that we can in Ramadan. Because... That's just not humanly possible. You know, there's a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ told one of the Sahaba who was, well, basically the, the story is that one of the Sahaba was kind of depressed about the fact that he couldn't maintain the same level of Iman all the time. He told the Prophet ﷺ that when I'm with you, I'm like on this high level. And when I get back to work, back to my family, you know, it's like gone, that feeling's gone. And the Prophet ﷺ said that if you could maintain that high level all the time, the angels will come down to earth and shake hands with you. Meaning it's not possible. It's just not possible even for the Sahaba to maintain that level all the time. So we need to cut ourselves a bit of slack. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Mankind was made weak. Humans were created weak. Uh, and so we need to keep our own weakness in mind when focusing on our post-Ramadan goals. So what I like to do generally, whenever I teach anyone about goal setting, uh, specifically when it comes to productivity or spirituality, is try to focus on two or three things at a time. I don't try to focus on everything at once. So some people, they want everything at once. So in, in one month, they want to improve their salah, improve their, their, their kirat of the Quran, give up every sin they've ever committed in their lives, give up all of their bad habits, start praying to hajjud, 
uh, start uh, you know uh, giving charity every day you can't make you can't maintain that momentum it's 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 just not humanly possible so start with three things right just start with three things and if you had to ask me what are the three number one priorities that we all should should start with number one is solar solar is number one i mean if, if we aren't praying five times a day let's make a habit of praying five times a day uh if we are praying five times a day, let's improve the quality of that prayer. Let's start praying the Sunnah. Let's start praying a Witr. Uh, if we are doing that, let's start praying the Hajjad. There's always a level above where we are that we can get to, you know, when it comes to our Salah. I just want to focus a little bit on that because, you know, uh, uh, many of us don't take Salah as seriously as we take fasting. And in this month of Ramadan, we prove to ourselves that we can fulfill the third and fourth pillars of Islam well. Most of us discharged our zakah and we fasted the month of Ramadan. Let's give the same focus and priority to the second pillar of Islam, which is Salah. Again, a reminder that in the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the people of Jahannam, uh, and when the people of Jannah are shocked, when they meet certain people in Jahannam, and, and, they, and they ask them, you know, uh, how did you end up amongst the people of Jahannam? Their first reply is, Lam nakumin al musallin. We never used to pray Salah. That's the number one reply. Right? And then the list of other things that they were used to give zakat, they used to treat people badly. But number one was, Lam nakuminal musalli. On the opposite side, we have the hadith where the Prophet said that on the day of judgment, the first thing will be asked about is our salah. And if that is in order, everything else will be in order. So prioritize salah. If we're not praying five times a day, let's start praying five times a day. That is the sign of the believer. That is like the most basic thing every Muslim should be doing. If you're finding it hard to pray the sunnah, just pray the farq. Just get into the habit of praying the farq. Once that's a habit, mm-hmm. then we can start building upon it with the sunnah and witr as well, inshallah. That's number one. The second thing uh, that we can try and keep going outside of Ramadan, something realistic everybody can do, is the recitation of Quran. Now, the Qur'an is our link to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Qur'an keeps us, you know, uh, connected to our creator. It just, it, it keeps us, it keeps our iman strong. And many of us, we only recite Qur'an in Ramadan or when someone passes away. So what I would like uh, for all of us to try and do is build a habit of five minutes a day. Five minutes a day. I'm not saying one juice a day. I'm not saying uh, half an hour a day. Five minutes a day. Maybe after Fajr, maybe after Zuhur, maybe after Isha. Just pick up the Quran, recite for five minutes, read the translation, and think about it. And it can be completely random. Just open anywhere in the Quran, read the Arabic, read the translation, and think about it. Make the double of the Quran. Uh, let the Quran become a part of our life, a part of our daily life. This will give us barakah throughout our day and throughout our year, and will help us to reach high spiritual levels throughout the year. Point number three is I'd like to focus on just three things, so it's realistic and practical. So we say number one is salah, number two is Quran. Number three. Choose one sin in your life to eliminate. Right? All of us, we are mountains of sins. Right? This, is, this is reality. Right? Uh, every son of Adam constantly makes mistakes. So we all have our mountains of sins. And to expect perfection from ourselves is not realistic. Allah does not expect perfection from us. Uh, we should not expect perfection from ourselves. But Allah expects us to try our best. And part of trying our best is to identify at least one sin in our lives that we can realistically get rid of. For those of you who are smoking, this is the perfect time to get rid of it, right? The government's even helping you to get rid of it. Uh, give up that stint. It, it, it's, it's bad for your health, especially now with the virus going around. And it is just not befitting the believer to have such bad habits. Uh, for those of us who, uh, people amongst us who look at things they're not supposed to be looking at, you know, try and give that up, make a plan uh, to, to give up, you know, uh, looking at, at, at filth and things which, which, are, which are prohibited. Uh, for those of us who maybe, you know, we, we find it difficult to wake up for Salat al-Fajr, let's give up that sin and make sure we up for Salat al-Fajr every day. Some of us, it's the sin of the tongue. You know, we, we, we backbite, we, we slander, we gossip too much. Let's learn to control what we say. Just choose one thing and, and just make a focused effort uh, to give up that sin for this year. Because if we can give up a sin for a year, it's realistic that we can give it up for life. And inshallah, next year we can choose something else to focus on. Uh, and if we slip up during the process, make it still far, make toba and try again. Uh, again, Allah does not expect perfection from us. He just expects us to try. So really, that, that's the three main things. If we want to maintain momentum outside of Ramadan, stay consistent in our salah, continue reciting Quran outside of Ramadan, and, and start giving up our sins one by one. If we do this, inshallah, we will be able to maintain our taqwa throughout the year. I mean, so I'm not sure if I can have any questions for you. Uh, so let's just uh, hear from you, Akil. 
uh, our time, time is quite, quite limited this afternoon, afternoon but uh, Akil yeah, can, uh, of course, go for it and then we'll wrap up for this afternoon. Yes, Ismail, you, you know, one of, the, one of the questions which often comes up, um, or one of the points which often comes up in discussion amongst young people is, I fulfill my duties, so I um, pray my salah, I'll read my Qur'an, but I still feel this sense of distance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I'm praying my salah as an example, you know, our minds are all over the place. Um, we're reciting the salah of the Quran, but it doesn't feel as if we're, we're attaining any, you know, any benefit from it. Are there any recommendations you could give us to try and um, change that, I suppose? Sure, that's an excellent question. And... Uh... I actually have a detailed video on YouTube about this. Uh, it's actually one and a half hours on how to enjoy your salah. So I'm going to give like maybe a two-minute summary now. But for those who want details, if you go to my YouTube channel, there's a, almost one and a half hour videos on how to enjoy salah. Many young people have told me it has transformed their life and transformed their salah. And really, uh, for me, it comes down to three things. Again, three things. Number one is our intention. Uh, before doing any good deeds, review our intention internally. Why am I doing this? Uh, for Salah, the best time to do it is when we are performing wudu. Many of us, the wudu is just like, you know, splashing water all over the place. But a wudu should be spiritual. We should be thinking to ourselves, I am preparing to worship Allah. I am preparing to stand before my Creator. We should be thinking these thoughts while performing the wudu so that we, we are putting ourselves into the right mental state for Salah. Right? So intention is, and, and preparation is very important. Number two, I believe this is for me one of the most important things. This has helped me and has helped many other people. Learn Arabic. Learn Arabic. And if you can't learn Arabic, learn the translations at least. Because when you, you know, when you know Arabic, the quality of your salah is on another level. You know, like when I stand and I pray salah, for me, it's like I'm reciting in English. That's how well I understand what I'm reciting. And obviously, someone who understands what they are reciting, the, the, the quality and that... Uh, that iman boost they're going to get from it is going to be on a different level from someone who does not understand what they are reciting. So if you can learn Arabic, learn Arabic. If you cannot learn Arabic, learn the translation and the tafsir of the surahs that you recite. So one of the things I did this Ramadan is on my blog, islamicselfhelp.com, I wrote a short tafsir of all of the short surahs at the end of the Quran. So you can go there and for any of the short surahs at the end of the Quran, uh, Surah al qasr Surah Ikhlas, uh, Surah Al-Asr, you can read a tafsir of it, a short tafsir of it. Uh, and the purpose of this is, these are the surahs we recite in our salah every day. If we can at least understand these surahs, then when we are praying our salah, instead of thinking about everything else, think about the tafsir of these surahs. That's one way to concentrate. right? So if we can't understand Arabic, at least th think about the translation or think about the, uh, the tafsir, and this will give us a higher quality salah. Number three, number three, don't rush. Don't ever rush your salah. Now force yourself to take your time. If you are praying four rakah in two minutes, you are not doing justice to your salah. It should take you at least five minutes. As we improve in quality, it should come up to about 10 minutes. But take your time with every ruku, with every sajda, take your time. If you do this, you will begin to experience the barakah that comes with it. So our intention, uh, doing things with preparation and taking our time, and most importantly, understanding what we do. When we understand what we do, naturally, the benefit we are going to get from it is going to be on a much higher level when then when we are reciting words that we don't understand. At the end of the day, Allah revealed the Quran to be understood and to be practiced and to be implemented, not just to be recited. So learn Arabic, and if you cannot learn Arabic, learn the translation, the tafsir. This will profoundly increase the quality of your salah and the quality of your Quran and the impact that it has on your life. I think that it really wraps up uh, and leaves us both with some motivation. I'm sure the listeners will agree, uh, some motivation to uh, be be simple uh, and be kind to yourself, but obviously reach to new heights in those texts that you choose to do. Uh, so, Sheikh Ismail, to you, uh, we say shukran and jazakallah for your time and uh, wish you a Mubarak, whether that is tomorrow or the next day. Uh, and uh, may Allah accept all that you have done. Uh, on the blog as well as in general uh, for your own uh, deeds that we do not know about and those that you have done to assist others as well um, to be accepted inshallah I mean Jazakallah khair for having me Eid Mubarak to all of you in advance and Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh So uh, with that of course we are now going to uh, do an ad break again of some of the advertisements getting the economy rolling something that we need to be considering 
uh, because and without that happening, unfortunately, uh, those who are most vulnerable will not uh, at all 